Hello everyone, my name is Amai Jeeves and welcome to the Hello World Let's Play series. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's episode 10. We made it. Double digits. The big 1-0. Off the 9 and before 11. 10. 10. 10. 10. <laughs> what did you say, big guy? That's right. 10. And today, we're going to work on building the giant tower. I was going to start it off by finishing the underwater bunker, which we got started, I believe, in episode 7. But I actually decided this probably wasn't the best idea. See, once we finally built this huge structure all the way up to the build height, we're then probably going to want to detail it. And when we do that, we may find we want to extend the base of this thing out a little bit further. So the idea of putting in all of that glass and then emptying the center of it of water, making that huge underwater bunker situation and then finding out that actually I have to make some holes in the glass and let the water back in, that, that does not sound fun. So we're going to do the sensible thing and start by building the tower up first. Now, in between and over the last couple of episodes, I've been doing an awful lot of mining down here, thanks to that trusty beacon that we just ran past, which has given us lots and lots of cobblestone. 12 full shulker boxes, to be more precise. So we're going to just pick these up, take them over to where we're going to build the tower and get started. If any of you have ever wondered what 12 full shulker boxes of cobblestone built in a giant tower looks like, it's something like this. <laughs> it's huge, isn't it? It's absolutely huge. To give this thing a sense of scale, this is a fort, which is, let's be honest, not exactly small, right? And this, this is the tower. <laughs> it's so, it's massive. I mean, it's almost twice the size of the fort already, and we've still got quite a chunk left to go. I mean, you can just see the gunpowder farm appearing now and then the top ring so I reckon we've probably got like what another third we have now however run out of cobblestone so I think it's fair to say we have got a considerable amount of mining to do quick update so as you can probably imagine I've been doing a huge amount of mining to gather up the rest of the cobblestone that we need and while I was doing it I found a rather small hole don't worry the staircase wasn't here before I put that in a rather small hole in the ceiling that seems to be incredibly well lit up so I followed it and it looks like that we have actually mined out all the way towards what I believe is Ginger Zeppelin or Towrag's underground village. Yeah, this is his underground village. This is hilarious. And I could be wrong, but I think we might be about to mine straight into it. So we might have to find a clever way of moving our way around it. Hello. <laughs> so the blocks to this side is the edge of the underground village, which means everything this side is safe to mine at least for a little while. We appear to have a problem. You see, while I was mining around the staircase that goes down to the underground village that belongs to Zeppi, um, I was digging along here and I found a block that peers into it and they appear to all be zombies now? <laughs> oh no. Now that the zombie villagers are somewhat contained, I dashed back to the fort real quick to grab some splash potions of weakness and some apples so that we can cure them. But I figured I'm not going to cure them myself now because if there is a lighting issue which is causing zombies to spawn in here, they're just going to end up getting transformed back into zombie villagers anyway. So instead, I've chosen to leave Zeppi a sign just to let him know what's happened and that he may have a lighting issue and also to let me know when he finds this. I figured that once he does, we can probably tell him what's actually happened and where we've been mining out all this space nearby and maybe he might want to make use of some of it. Sorry, I killed your villagers. <laughs> <laughs> A huge advantage of mining all this cobblestone is that we've also managed to gather a huge amount of other resources as well, including this rather marvellous selection we have here. A huge amount of redstone blocks, some lapis, iron, all sorts of lovely goodies. But most importantly, 73 diamond ore. 
<laughs> and also a random six diamonds because apparently when I'm mining with a fortune pickaxe with a beacon, I can't slow down fast enough as soon as I see the diamonds and occasionally break a couple. <laughs> So we are going to lay these all out here on this platform and then we're going to take our fortune pickaxe to find out how many diamonds we have actually got. But before we get to that you have to admit stacking up diamond ore like this always unbelievably satisfying. <laughs> okay here we go. Oh this is good. It's just so satisfying. I mean if I could just mine diamonds all day <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Also, it is working out an absolute treat for mending my fortune pickaxe. I was going to say, it was getting a little bit low on durability, but diamond ore, yeah, that's definitely going to do the trick. Right, just make sure we've picked everything up. <laughs> that's amazing! So, from just over a stack of diamond ore, we've got almost three stacks of diamonds. This is brilliant. And if we check out the valuable shulker box that came in my ender chest now, we've got a massive 23 diamond blocks. We also have another 12 full shulker boxes of cobblestone, so I think we should get back to building the tower. there we have it folks the bare walls of the tower are now in place and if i do say so myself this thing looks absolutely mega i don't know if it'll be within this episode but we are going to be adding some detail at some point and i also need to finish the sea bunker at the bottom but as you can probably imagine this has taken an absolutely massive amount of time to complete so i'm going to take a quick break from this for now and go and see what's going on in the nether we're going to start with the usual post box because i know exactly what that barrel is and we're going to get to that in a minute so if we look in here oh okay so we've got some bits of paper Hey you, EJ. Nice little message from Erica Janey there. Thank you very much. Uh, unscramble to find payment. Eswell Snooty Peak Lottie? Enjoy yellow. Okay, I've been staring at this bit of paper for a few minutes now trying to have a look and work out what on earth it could mean. I think... Well, I'm guessing. I say, I say, I think. I'm, I'm guessing that those those words are sort of like scrambled up, so they're anagrams of other words. But the only word I can see in there is toilet on the last one. <laughs> I, I don't know if that says something about me. I'm not sure, but I I can't think of anywhere there's a toilet on the server. Okay, seriously, the only word I can actually see on here is toilet. <laughs> At this point, I've had to resort to writing it down. I've got a notepad in front of me, I've written out the letters, and I think I've at least managed to work out the first word, which is Yellowstone. And I still can't see past toilet. <laughs> I've also managed to work out that the second word is keep, and that got me thinking. Yellowstone keep actually does have a toilet. Now all I have to do is remember where the toilet is. Okay, so, I mean, here's the tower. I'm pretty sure it's up the top here somewhere. It's not down there. I'm sure you made like a little room with the door. Oh my god, I think it's this. I think it's here. I think... Yes! Yes, this is the toilet! <laughs> Wait, so where's the... Oh, barrel. Barrel, barrel, barrel. <gasps> Yay! Yay! Diamonds! Diamond blocks! If you haven't seen the last episode of the Hello World Let's Play series or just don't remember it very well and are wondering why Yellow has paid me 10 diamond blocks, it's because... I sold him a box of the backup gear that we created in between filming across the last couple of episodes. I realised this would have made an awful lot more sense if I had told you this at the beginning of this clip. <laughs> and finally, that brings us back to the barrel, which is filled with fire resistance potions. You see, I made a great deal with Zeppi for an entire barrel or chest full of fire resistance potions for eight diamonds. Now normally there are about three, I think it's one diamond for three, which works out as normally for nine diamonds for an entire chest. So he's done it for me for eight, with a condition that I help him do a little bit of cheeky advertising, which you will get to see hopefully in a future episode once he's rebuilt his shop. And speaking of shops, we built a redstone consultancy in the last episode, so we should go and check out to see if we've had any requests. 
Of course, how could I forget? That's not the only new shop on the server we also have. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Sh oh, oh, oh. All right, I won't call it disgusting. Sorry, mate. <laughs> This, uh, this wonderful um, looking shop, otherwise known as The Blob. Uh, this was constructed by Erica Cheney. Um, <laughs> it's the most psychedelic, crazy looking thing I've ever seen. I do like the fact that she has basically used more stock to actually build the shop, though, than she currently has in it. <laughs> it just looks ridiculous. It just looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> So, here we go. Moment of truth. Do we have any requests? So we're going to head into the shop. I still can't get over how awesome that door is. And have a look in the shop. Oh! Oh! We get arrow trap that is hidden and activate when switch on and fires when a pressure plate is activated. Hopefully made sense, Zeppi. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a chat with Zeppi and find out a little bit more if I can. Hello. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm not bad yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Um, I oh oh oh, <laughs> I uh, I would be better. I'm currently being attacked by a hoglin. Um, I visited the wonderful redstone consultancy that I built today. That I built in my episode last week, and I've got a lovely little request from you that says, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read this word for word. Arrow trap that is hidden and activate when switch on and fires when a pressure is activated. Hopefully made sense. <laughs> Are you trying to kill a specific type of mob or a player or or like a prank um, like what it's going to be for? It's it's a, it's it's a home defense system because I have slabbed my whole house. Okay, and... cool. To try and stop mob spawning, and I'm getting mob spawning. I was trying to work out roughly where they're sort of coming in from because I've just looked across the hall and I can see that they're all kind of like. Oh, are you in your house now? Me. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll come to you real quick. Bear with me. Yeah, wow. I've... You've been busy. There is a gap underneath though, which could be a problem. Yes, that is your problem. So I, if you're wondering why they're still spawning, <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> amazing if you're wondering why they're still spawning um it's because um they they can't spawn on a half slab if you laid all of these one lower it would be perfect does this mean that you no longer want an arrow trap or would you like an arrow trap anyway if you are yeah. just going to re-slab all of it you could end up you know essentially making me making you a trap that is uh is pointless Redundant. or useless um yeah so i'm happy to build you a different redstone contraption or trap for a different purpose, if you have any ideas. I did like my booby trap. How about, how about yeah. something that they walk in, they get bombarded with arrows, and in the event that they die, there's a hopper that collects all their stuff. I like this. They will raise you a counter offer. Oh, go on. Okay. You give me freedom to rebuild that front part of your house bit where you normally come oh. in. And what oh, we yeah. do is we make a secret entrance, a super secret entrance that only you and absolutely everyone who watches my YouTube channel will know about. Um, yeah. And that will be for you. And then the main entrance will actually just be a permanent booby trap so that when they walk in, they die, but it collects their stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. And then I can just, be, yeah, yeah. I can give, I can ransom their belongings back to them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> perfect and um, because i record so far ahead most of the time no one's going to know about it for quite some time so feel free to invite as many of the people on the server over to your house once i finished it um and yeah we're gonna have a great time there you go you heard it we need to create a booby trap entrance at the beginning of zeppi's house do we call it a house let's call it a house yep <laughs> it needs to kill the player that walks in and collect their stuff so that we don't destroy anything and also he can use it for ransom. So I've cleared out this space here in the wall which I'm hoping should be enough for the trap that I've got in mind and I've also done some resource gathering. Obviously I've got my two redstone boxes out but we need a few additional materials which are in here. First thing that we're going to do is make it so that this staircase can retract into the wall leaving a giant pit below. I'm out a couple of blocks here, drop these in here and then we need a couple of sticky pistons actually no just one sticky piston attached which i think we should be able to just place 
there. Get this lever to test. That's awesome. Just build this up. We should be able to make it flush with the wall. Fantastic. Add a pressure plate. Dig underneath the pressure plate. Put the door back in. <laughs> Link up the redstone, but we need to be inverse. We want a torch first. Next job is to build an obsidian pit here for us. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> the reason we want obsidian mainly is just to make it more difficult for them to break out of. Okay, the pit is done, so we're just going to test it still works. And yep, that looks pretty good. The request specifically asked for some sort of arrow trap, so that's the next thing that we're going to put in, starting with a dispenser. Off of the dispenser, we're then going to build a clock to power it dug out a trench here that will allow me to connect the redstone from over there. So I link them together just as they are, so I just run that redstone line around here. All that will happen is it will fire the clock for this arrow dispenser once. So I think the solution to this is that we're going to build a pulse extender. Door closes. Uh, it's depowering, this is good. And it's like, hey, this is great! There's quite a few more bits I want to add to this thing. The first of which is the item collection system. So we're going to place a chest in here and then run a line of hoppers. Add in a lava drop. Oh, this is dangerous. Some soul campfires. And the reason I'm adding soul campfires is because they actually do more damage to a player than normal campfires. I also completely forgot to add in the cobwebs, which is two and three. Much better. I now have to test it which means jumping into my own trap designed to kill me wearing my fully stacked set of netherite gear. Oh, I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. Uh, here goes. Here goes. No. Ah! Oh, no. Oh, oh, God. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure where... What's... Okay. I don't think the arrows are hitting us. Um... Okay, this is going to be an incredibly slow death. I think that pulse extender is going to have to be much longer. Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> there are not many times when I cheer when I die, but this is definitely one of them. Let me check the chest. Oh, that's awkward. Um, this is not good. I couldn't find my items. And they're not in the chest. Oh! Oh, they're in the chest! Wait, did it work then? Attempt number two! Ah! Oh, oh, okay. Arrows hitting me? Yeah, look, they're just hitting the, the, the thing on the other side. Okay. So, the dispenser is, is too low to hit me because I'm being dragged down by the cobwebs for so long. This is progress. I can do that easy enough by just moving the clock over by one moving that little link over by one, and then placing the dispenser on the top. That's all done. Here we go. Attempt number three. And we fall, and then we get hit, and we're getting hit. Yep. Oh, yep, we're being hit by some of the arrows. Also, we could definitely do with extending the pulse so that more of them fire. One super enormous pulse extender extension complete. Attempt number four. Here we go. Oh, yep, I hit the fire. I'm now in the cobwebs, and no arrows are firing. Why are no arrows firing? One adjustment to the extension of the pulse extender. Complete. Attempt number five, I think. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Our arrows are definitely firing. This is good. Now the soul sand campfires are kicking in. Is it going to stop? Why is it not stopped? One new, improved, much smaller, adjustable pulse extender. Test number seven, I think. Oh no, hit the door. Oh god, oh, oh wow. Well. Oh, this is so terribly. <laughs> Attempt number eight, I think now, or seven, or oh no, the things happened. Oh my gosh, I keep getting stuck on the door. Attempt number nine, and pray we don't get stuck on the door. That's better. Oh, yeah, and we've fallen. We're being hit by arrows. And it sounds fantastic. This is good. A slow and painful death. Stop firing arrows now. We're about half health. So maybe we need to add some more items in so it's firing for a bit longer. And then I think we're there. It's all finished. I've done it. It's all covered up, complete. Everything is ship shape and shiny in place where it should be. And we've got you know, we've got nice little finishing touches like this. We've got an arrows chest, which we can do use to do, <laughs> use to fill up these uh, dispenser. Um, I've filled this wall back in. If we come around here, we've even got a new little official entrance to 
his base, which is great, rather than this one, which is obviously the booby trap. And we've also got access to the hoppers, where we can turn around and choose how many arrows we want it to shoot each time the trap gets set off. And it should all be working. So if I just make sure we've got nothing of value on us. Yep, just those. If we test this out, should all be okay. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I love this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a nice, incredibly slow and painful death, as you can tell. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, my gosh. The arrows. <laughs> there. Dead. And now, oh, let's switch back out of that mode. If we run back to the chest, we should see our items appear in here very soon. It takes a little while because they get caught in the cobwebs. So you have to wait for them. There we go. Perfect absolutely perfect it's been fun but sadly that's it from me for today's episode if you enjoyed it please do leave a like or consider subscribing and remember your feedback is always welcome down in the comments section see you later guys Psst. yeah you i'm talking to you hey are you here for the bonus clip at the end of the video i bet you are that's the only reason that anybody stays to watch the end of my videos sadly today's one is a little bit different you see i've got to be honest it's been a tough week and I, I didn't find a natural, funny, conclusive moment to put the end of the video, which I know is kind of a bit sad for episode 10, really. But I have an idea. Oh, that was cool. I thought it would be cool that instead of me coming up with an epic or funny moment to go at the end of the video, that you guys could share your favourite moments of the series so far with me. So head down to the comments section and let me know what your favourite moment of the Hello World Let's Play series has been in the first 10 episodes.